Hello, my name is John Sosha, the father of Jeremy Sosha, and I want to welcome you to the next exciting episode of The Infinite Rabbit Hole. Welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Jeremy. We're going to talk about black dogs again today. How do you guys feel about that? Everybody all at once, go. Ah, oh, man. Sounds wonderful. Again. It's a great idea. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a string of episodes on the black dog phenomenon. Basically, what happened was the first episode we did for the Paranormal Network, we did black dogs. There's more that I can add to that. Basically, I had to cut some stuff to get it under under two hours. Um, and as I was doing research on other regional black dogs, I found more stuff that we can just throw into general black dog lore. So I figured, screw it, let's go ahead and do another episode. Um, I got some pretty good stuff. I don't have a ton. Today's going to probably be one of our shorter episodes. Um, so... Congrats, guys. You guys don't have to all go, you know, sit there and fall asleep on me. But uh, before we jump in, um, let's uh, let's introduce our our co-host. Let's start with uh, Kenzar today. Kid, how you doing? Hello. Doing pretty good, actually. Good, good. Excited for you? another Black Dog episode. You know you're ready. It's so exciting. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. Why are you guys not <laughs> excited about the black dogs? I think it's cool. I think it's good stuff. I just told you I was sitting on the edge of my seat, man. What? Uh, like... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, how you doing, man? I'm doing really good, except my AC is not working, so it's really hot in here, and it's just going to get hotter with all this equipment going, but I'm here for you guys. So, Florida guy Jeff is going to sweat just for you <laughs> today. Yes. So thank you, Florida guy Jeff. You're welcome. And Jake, how you doing, man? Doing okay? I'm doing well. As you can see, I'm sporting our Christmas logo. Ooh, ooh which that's I fancy. Which I don't believe isn't available in the store anymore. I don't but next so. Christmas it will be. Actually, I think it a, is. No, I it's a seasonal it t-shirt. Don't listen to Jeremy. <laughs> I think it is. But no, just supporting the merch. <laughs> As you can see, we pay for it too. But I'm doing well. Just got off work and ready to have the exact same opinion I had last time about the Black Dogs. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not we're not adding anything really crazy. This is more of like uh, behind the lore kind of stuff today. It's uh, just mm. additional information, not really meant to change your mind. Just some cool stuff that I came across, and I was like, you know what? This is I have enough to just do another episode. So why not? You know, let's 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 do the infinite rabbit hole thing and and not leave any stone unturned. Before we do that, I am wearing the Raglan tee. It's pretty awesome. Baseball, nice. baseball sleeves. I love it. You play baseball in that thing? I do not. Oh, okay. Then it's like wasted. at all. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I don't have an intro for you guys today, seeing how I'm not really doing anything extravagant, like starting a brand new series or anything. Just doing part two in, in a seven or 27 part series. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out, I guess. I guess you will. Um, Yeah, you guys ready to jump in? Ready. Ready. Let's cool. go. Just for everybody on the Paranormal Network, we don't always take 15 minutes to get the episode started. Anyways. You don't have to spoon feed it to them. They'll get used to it. <laughs> you will <laughs> learn. You will learn and you will like it. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the degrees of details, physical and non-physical details of, of <laughs> these black dogs. Just additional information, right? Uh, it is in Mark Norman's book, Black Dog Folklore, that we get additional details about the physical attributes of these black dogs. This book 
highlights the world and folklore involving the black dog phenomena in the British Isles and on occasion steps outside of this area into other parts of the world. Early in this book, he points out what he calls the six different descriptive details of black dogs. One, the size. There are often stories that describe the dogs as being extremely large, and some that describes that describe them the size of normal dogs. But what is different about this dog compared to all others in the world is that the size of the animal seems to be controlled by the creature itself. In some cases, the dog gets so large and thinned out that it rivals buildings and treetops before fading away to nothing. The most common description of this ghost's size is uncommonly large for a dog, and is often described as being as large as a donkey. Number two, the color. Although the most common color reported is black, these phantom dogs have been described as also being white and yellow, and on occasion, I'm sorry, and in one case pointed out by Norman, red. Number three, physical details. The fur of these creatures come in both smooth and shaggy looking textures, and in a few reports where, peop- where someone was able to touch one, they almost always report the fur as feeling more coarse, like that of a pig, rather than a dog. The eyes tend to always be very large, and often described as being as big as tea saucers. On a few occasions, it has been said that the creature only has one eye in the middle of its head. No matter how many eyes it does have, the eyes are normally always described as shining or glowing, with the most common color being red and sometimes yellow. Number four, the head. The heads of the creatures are mostly described as those of a dog's, with it commonly resembling that of greyhounds. On the occasion, the creatures are said to not have a head, and on other occasions, they have been reported as having multiple heads. There are also reports of dogs having a human's face, which seems to be a regional thing in certain parts of the world. In some variations, have been seen with horns on the tops of their heads. Number five, the oddities. There are other outlying cases where the dogs are seen walking bipedally on their hind legs, and reports have also been filed in places around the world detailing these dogs as having chains that they drag from their necks. Some stories even exist of the creature speaking. And finally, number six, the function. Many reports from around the world differ in what the dog is described as doing during the encounter. It has been seen simply crossing the road, walking behind someone, running at the witness, barking, growling, and standing completely still. With such a wide range of posture descriptions, it is difficult to say what the real motives might be. So what do you guys think about the additional details that I just laid out? Sounds like a shapeshifter to me, bro. It's a lizard people dog. <laughs> Lizard people dog. It's clearly a it. doing it. <laughs> clearly, dude. Nothing, Jake. Nothing. Nah. Nah. Just just the the coloring threw me off. Just the Oh, they can be black or white or yellow and sometimes red. It's just like, all right, pick one. Well, are I'm we talking about of, the phantom black of... dogs or are we talking about the phantom <clears throat> yellow dogs? Or Clifford True. the Big Red Dog. Who are we talking about? I was about gonna right now? say that. Is this where Clifford the Big Red Dog came from? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe we'll have to deep dive into Interesting. that. Interesting. And really bore the shit out of these people. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can talk about Clifford stomping around the city and crushing people and cars and stuff. Possibly. Who knows? <laughs> Part three. Part Clifford. three. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um the red one was kind of a weird story. I didn't include it because it's just not long enough. It's very, very brief. And the white dog is actually very common in Texas. We'll talk about that when we start getting into the Americas um, or North America, at least. I think I, I bundled Canada and, and the U.S. together. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll jump into that. But that was just kind of his brief descriptions at the beginning of this absolutely wonderful book. Uh Black Dog Folklore by Mark Norman. Absolutely awesome book. If anybody's looking for a really, really good read, 
into the black dog phenomenon, that is the one to get. I had to actually buy it from a uh, um, a store across the pond. I I couldn't find it here in the U.S. Um, so it took quite a while to get here, and I'm happy that I bought it because it's really, really good. So in the description that you did, will you be talking about most of these features in like uh, incidents and stories as the series continues? Yes. So this is pretty much like a, hey, if you hear about this um, spirit hound or whatever being yellow, this is why we're going over the, the basic descriptions right now. So as we go further into the series, it'll be like, oh, okay, that's where that falls into place. Yeah, looking at the descriptions that I just laid out real quick, I think the only thing I don't bring up is the red one. Just yeah. because it was so, so short and brief. And it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a complete outlier. But yeah, everything else that I'm looking at here, um, yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to point out that I undervalued in a lot of the the reports and the descriptions because um, we 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 don't plagiarize here. So everything that I do is rewriting someone else's words. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, paraphrasing is the the term for it. Um, I do give credit where credit is due and I, I do paraphrase people in quotations um a very very i mean i, I can't tell you like almost 90 percent of the reports coming out of england the dog's eyes were as big as saucers saucers are the little plate that you put the teacup on mm-hmm um a very very common description and then also uh the dog itself was as big as a calf so i i left those out in almost all of the the, uh the stories um because it was just so common and that's why i put it in this description to kind of cover all that so uh, Hmm. a lot of descriptions talk about them having big red eyes uh in the original uh, report the person or the reporter reports it as being as big as saucers so that's pretty much it you guys ready for the next part ready to go yep all right ready. it gets better guys i promise all right let's talk about bridges this is a short one as we stated in part one of the series Black dogs are seen commonly around roadways, paths, and bodies of water. One additional piece of knowledge to add to the water content is that there was a time in history where it was common that when a bridge was built, the builders would send a dog or other animal across the bridge first before any human. The reason for this is that bridge building was very difficult, and it was believed that it couldn't be done without making a deal with the devil first. This deal would be that the devil would assist in the successful building of the bridge, and the devil would get ownership of the first sold across it. So it became common practice to throw food or bones over the bridge and have a dog chase down the prize by crossing the bridge first. Is this why so many sightings of phantom black dogs are seen on bridges and waterways? Another brief tidbit that Norman adds in his book is how like in old churches of British of the British Isles, it was not shocking to find the remains of dogs or other animals encased in the actual structure of a bridge or large amounts of dog skeletons found near or below the bridge buried under the earth. So what do you guys think about that as a possible explanation for a lot of these phantom dogs Hunting bridges. Hmm. I don't know, man. It's going to take a lot for me to not feel like this is complete woo after the last episode. So, you know, I'm still kind of under the assumption that the the biggest explanation is people are just getting eaten by wolves, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were there were wolves on the British Isles originally. Sure, I don't think they're they're there anymore. Um. But, I mean, that was something. Like, uh, one thing I did find out in a lot of this research 
especially when we're talking about uh, the British Isles, is that families have a coat of arms, and a lot of times they mm-hmm. would they would use common animals in their coats of arms. And you have things such as black dogs, wolves, black cats, dragons, wyverns, all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, if you think back to the the uh, Jersey Devil episode where we were talking about the Leeds family and the Leeds family crest, uh, Leeds is actually the name of a place in England. Uh, where the Leeds family supposedly originally came from before they created Leeds Point in New Jersey. And on the Leeds family crest, at least from the Jersey Devil story, uh, there was a wyvern on it, which a lot of people took as a representation of the Jersey Devil. Hmm. What's interesting about you saying that is now I'm thinking of a whole nother, like train of thought on this because a lot of those crests and like symbology and stuff actually represents certain families or certain uh royalty or a whole bunch of other things so like the eagle for instance you know that would be a representation of a specific family or the serpent is another specific family or bloodline right and you see those archetypes used over and over again so maybe maybe the black dog reference is just an old reference to a certain bloodline or a certain family and it's just yeah, absolutely. ingrained in folklore. Very good chance. Very good chance. Hmm. You guys ready to move on? I find the idea of them encasing dogs inside of the bridges um, both saddening and hilarious. <laughs> okay. That, well, I would uh, like to know the, the reason for both. Well, I like dogs. Yes, and unless you do. the dogs were already dead. And then they are just like, all right, put the remains here to guard the bridge or whatever it was. Um, or the alternative, which is kind of funny. People have been making bridges for thousands of years, but suddenly now they're so difficult that we have to start doing some crazy stuff. Um, and then the other part of it is um, the idea that the dogs were not already dead, and instead they killed them by burying them alive or, or sacrificing them you know, using the bridge as an altar and then encasing them inside of it as like a tomb, which is awful. <laughs> so it's like a, a weird, weird history. Very strange stuff. Very, very strange stuff. I mean, if I was a dog and I was killed by being encased in a bridge, mm. I'd probably haunt it. Yeah, that'd be probably <laughs> one of the worst ways for a dog to die yeah. at that time. And uh, pretty messed up. Absolutely horrible. We didn't I agree. put it past people either back then. They were, we were barbarians back then, man. We did all kinds oh, sure. of shit. Absolutely. All right. Bridge building barbarians. <laughs> all right. I'm going to move on. All right. <laughs> wow. What? I'm going to cut fine. you off every time you, you comment on mine. Anyway, you... moving on. <laughs> One night. A bus driver by the name of William Knott was driving near Blackmore Gate in Exmoor of West Somerset, England, when he and a handful of his passengers witnessed a large black dog run out in front of the bus. A few women screamed in anticipation of the sound or act of hitting the dog, but nothing had ever happened. When Knott stopped his bus to examine the area to see if he did in fact hit the animal, there was absolutely no damage and no body laying in or around the road. Now, I added this story because of our first part. We talked about a story from our Beast of Bray Road episode where a couple were driving and witnessed an animal on all fours jump in front of their car. Their stories were incredibly similar, and I wanted to give another example of this kind of event. And trust me, there are plenty more as well. One of these such stories comes from Sizewell in Suffolk, England in 1982, and shows a different point of view of a similar incident. The witness was 17 years old at the time and reported that he and a friend of his were walking down a long stretch of straight road owned by the Sizewall Hall at dusk. The road had a wall that was built by a local estate that they had followed the whole path of their travels. On the other side of the road was a very large and dense line of hedges with no gaps. In the direction that they were walking, a car appeared from the distance, driving at roughly 
30 miles per hour. As the car approached closer, they witnessed a very large black dog running next to the car. When the car was approaching them, they lost sight of the animal, and when the car passed, the dog was nowhere to be found. They did not believe that the dog could have made it through the bushes or over the wall. Instead, they believed that the dog disappeared as the car passed them. What do you guys think? Very similar circumstances. Yes. Very, very similar. And there are a lot of stories about these animals getting hit by a car or running into a car or, uh, you know, uh, you're talking about older times, running into carriages, uh, getting uh, pummeled by a horse, you know, a man running or riding mm-hmm. a horse down a dirt road. And this thing just comes out of nowhere and gets, you know, supposedly trampled by this this horse. But the horse doesn't react other than just being scared shitless. Um, but no dog every anywhere, no damage to the horse or the carriage, and it just disappears. It's very common, very common story. I don't know. Imaginations playing tricks on people, or drugs. Lots of drugs could do that. I was going to say yep. drugs, but I said drugs last time, so I didn't want to. <laughs> Well, I mean, if it's drugs, it's drugs. Say drugs. That's all I think about is fucking drugs. drugs. Jeff, all you think about is drugs, bro. <laughs> Every time. It's like, do what drugs, do you think about kids. that? Drugs. <laughs> about mushrooms. The second drug. It's the mushrooms, yeah. It's always the mushrooms. No, it's the they kangaroos. Made mushrooms. <laughs> no, <laughs> the kangaroos. <laughs> yeah. Were they sure it wasn't a kangaroo? <laughs> no. You know, I was going to ask that question. It Was it not? Was it a kangaroo? <laughs> no, I was it not so. a kangaroo? I don't know. <laughs> Although in his book, he never said that it wasn't. Well, there you uh-huh. go. Case closed. Uh-huh. Kangaroos are doing it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think always I, been the kangaroos. I don't think you can take kangaroos off the table. All right, let's move along. This one's going very fast. <laughs> we have talked about many different places and landmarks that are known to be haunted by various black dogs around the world. But a few darker places exist as well, and these may be the scariest of them all when you look at it. Now, warning, we're going to talk about some difficult things for some people to listen to. So if you don't do well with self-harm or uh, bodies, please go ahead and skip ahead a couple minutes and uh, skip this section. And we'll move on. Old gallows and suicide burial areas are very popular haunts for the phantom black dogs. Many places of human execution and demise seem to be popular places for haunts in general, but gallows and suicide crossroad burials in particular seem to be a favorite of our phantom black dogs. In the early years of the 1700s and 1800s, people who were killed as a punishment or people who took their own lives were not allowed a burial with those that died from other means. The bodies of these people would be buried in one of a few different places, one of which is at a crossroads, so that their spirit could never find the way back home and would be stuck in the decision of direction for the rest of eternity. A story is told in Mark Norman's book, Black Dog Folklore, on page 119 and 120. That tells a story which was originally published in Chambers' Book of Days from 1888. I have copied it down for you all to enjoy. Word for word. Quote, Within the parish of Tring, but about three miles from the town, a poor old woman was, in 1751, drowned for suspected witchcraft. A chimney sweep, who was the principal perpetrator of this atrocious deed, was hung and gibbeted near the place where the murder was effected. Whilst the gibbet stood, and long after it disappeared, the spot was haunted by a black dog. The writer was told by the village schoolmaster, who had been abroad, that he himself had seen the diabolical dog. Quote, I was returning home, said he, late at night with a gig with the person who was driving. When he came near the spot, where the portion of the gibbet had laid, had lately stood, we saw on the bank of the roadside, in which a ditch or narrow brook runs, 
a flame of fire as large as a man's hat. What's that? I exclaimed. Hush, said my companion, all in a tremble, and suddenly pulling in his horse, made a dead stop. I then saw an immense black dog lying in the road just in front of our horse, which also appeared trembling in fright. The dog was the strangest creature I had ever beheld. He was as big as a Newfoundland, but very gaunt, shaggy, with long ears and tail, eyes like balls of fire, and large, long teeth, for he opened his mouth and seemed to grin at us. He looked more like a fiend than a dog. And I trembled as much as my companion. In a few minutes, the dog disappeared, seemed to vanish like a shadow, or to sink into the earth and we drove on over the spot where he had lain. The same canine apparition is occasionally still witnessed at the same place or near it. So, this was a story from a man's point of view during his run in with a phantom black dog at the location of a gibbet. And for those that don't know what a gibbet is, it is a specific contraption used for hanging criminals. There are numerous and other stories involving sightings of black dog specters at these kinds of locations and burial locations at crossroads. In this particular story, it is hard to determine whether the black dog is supposed to represent the woman who was accused of being a witch or the man who had incorrectly accused her of so. Either way, the exact people referred to in the story can be found and traced back to a woman by the name of Ruth Osborne and a man by the name of Thomas Colley. It is publicly, publicly recorded that Ruth was killed by a way of ducking, an act carried out to determine if an accused witch was really a witch that involved having her arms crossed in front of them, excuse me, which involved having their arms crossed in front of them and having their thumb tied to the big toe on their opposite foot, in which they would then be thrown into water. If the accused witch died by drowning, they were then considered to be innocent of their accusations, and if they lived by swimming away or floating, they would be considered guilty of being a witch and would be killed on the spot. So when Ruth Osborne was found innocent and died of her trial by witch ducking, Thomas Colley was then sentenced to be hung on the shore of the water near Miss Osborne's death. As a small teaser to another story in common black dog sighting at an old gallows location, if you find yourself near Roth of Glamorgan, England, at the end of Plaka Way, an old execution area is said to still be haunted by a black dog. But be careful. This one is said not to be too friendly. So what do you guys think of witch ducking and gallows being a popular haunt for these black dogs? Well, witch ducking seems like a complete lose-lose situation. Again, we were barbarians at one point. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say the same thing. Seems kind of pointless either way. So you lose no matter what you do. <laughs> real quick, Jake, mm. seeing how that you have been in this town known as Norfolk, mm -hmm. Virginia, there is, I believe it's down in Virginia Beach, a road called Witch Duck Road. Yep. You ever, that's what it's Many named times. after. Yep. I actually looked Wild. into it after doing the research um, for this particular part. and found out the exact name of the woman who was killed there by witch ducking. Yep. That wow. is literally named Witch Duck Road because it was the, the original road was past a body of water, a small pond that they used to use in witch ducking trials right here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Huh. Brutal. You guys want to get spooked? Let's go camp next to that pond. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's still there. I don't I, I don't know. That would be interesting to look at. Um, but yeah, uh, Jake, if you want to know who that is and whatnot, I can uh, get that information for you. I would like that. And yeah, I know that road very well. I used to call it something differently that kind of rhymed with it. But um, <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it here and i don't say the, that sort of language anymore anyway <laughs> um, but no that yeah i i had no idea why it was called that i was like very strange but you know we were in 
one of the states, I believe Virginia was one of the 13 original colonies. There's a lot of weird towns over there, a lot of weird cities, a lot of uh, Civil War and Revolutionary War uh, battlefields that are over there and things like that. So it's just like, I imagine, I didn't really think about it as being part of the history, but it's like, I would have more of a complaint of the pronunciation of Norfolk and Suffolk and Portsmouth uh, versus the spelling um then being like ah witch duck road very strange Ugh, i should look into that but that, <laughs> that is interesting that's it crazy I, I wish that i was still living there um because now that we're doing this podcast that would be something to look into yeah. <laughs> being like hey is this pond still here where a bunch of people were <laughs> killed for being quote-unquote witches you know yeah or existing and being weird maybe like this person's socially awkward they're probably doing witchcraft let's kill them they're doing a podcast on strange stuff they're they're all witches <laughs> whoa we, we would easy. all be tried you are a witch I would i'm be just tried. a guy that likes music which makes me also a witch i guess <laughs> what do you think kenzer i don't know i okay. i think it's the kangaroos i'm going to I'm going to go ahead and move on. <laughs> well, I want to say oh. that the crossroads thing is super interesting. Because in, in a bunch of cultures, the crossroads is like the place where, you know, the spirit world meets the, the living world. Or it's the, the realm between life and death or in some variation of that, right? Like Greek mm -hmm. mythology, Romans. Uh, fuck, there's so many where that's like thing, even in like our modern culture, you know, like the, the devil meets you at the crossroad, right? Mm -hmm. It's like this spot. So it's interesting that this is another one of those. It, so it follows this theme that goes back to ancient Greece, probably even further than that. So kind of leads me still into that. Maybe they're just repurposing stories. I, I, I can't remember who quoted, uh, who's quoted saying this, but there's a saying out there that there's only 12 stories and they've all been told over and over again or something like that. Like every story that's ever been told is one of the same 12 stories, just different plot, different characters, but it's all the same, like archetypes of the story. Hmm. So it's kind of what's, what I see going here. That's interesting. Jake, did you have anything to say? Man? Yeah, I need some clarification. What exactly is a crossroads? Are we talking about like literally where two streets intersect or this was more like this road leads to this town, and this road leads to that town, and this is in the middle of nowhere, and then right there on the, the X of the two roads is like, that's some sort literally of... literally that. It's a crossroads, that's an intersection. Yeah. You ever been in a city? A lot of crossroads. <laughs> a lot of crossroads. Tons <laughs> of crossroads. Well, that's uh. interesting, too, and I don't want to get too far off on a different rabbit hole, but, like, the idea that, you know, time's not linear, and, like, most, like, car accidents, for instance, happen at intersections, so there's a lot of deaths that happen at intersections so maybe there's some correlation between crossroads or intersections being this between world or this you know in between I, you know what i'm saying like there, there might be some correlation there where past present and future are all the same thing so you have millions of people who die at intersections now so maybe ten thousand years ago they were somehow seeing through and having these paranormal experiences at crossroads yeah, I don't like buy that haunting at all. Going interesting, though. <laughs> it is interesting. I mean, think of the number of car accidents that happen. Most of them happen at intersections. I mean, that's because people don't look and they just fly through. Well, what I'm saying True. is, like, why would things only have to be haunted by something that happened in the past? Why couldn't something be haunted from something that's going to happen in the future? Especially if time oh. loops. If time loops. There you go. If time loops. It makes sense. Could you imagine? You're like walking and then all of a sudden you see like this future ghost. Could be. It's got like a. Uh, I don't really believe in ghosts, but. Like a hoverboard. You know, if I'm going <laughs> to. A Marty McFly type character exactly. coming yeah. towards you. <laughs> well, then that would be a huge problem because every time a ghost is depicted, it's always some like Victorian era woman that was hung or something like that it's never it's never some hipster whose vape blew up in their face and you know they or something like that or someone who choked on a piece of pizza it's always it's always oh and in, in the colonial days oh and it's just like okay yeah sure 
It's like, yeah, come on. Come I don't on, believe give me that ghosts. guy that was chasing the dollar into the road. Where is yeah, he at? I don't, I don't believe in ghosts, so that makes sense what you're saying to me. Like, why is it always <laughs> the past? But I do they're believe, fake. <laughs> That's why. I do believe that, like, energies can ripple through forward and backwards in time. So, like, yeah, your ghost might not be haunting a certain place, but the the traumatic energy that happens, you know, when you're being murdered or some crazy, you know, that energy could ripple and somebody else who's intuitive might be able to pick up on that in certain places. So it's not necessarily your ghost haunting it. It's just like the energy somehow is just tied to that location. Hmm. According to Jake, time looping is debunked. No, I didn't say that. That's, that's what you nope. said. Okay. Didn't say that. All right, all right. Definitely, definitely feel like time is more circular than, you know. Linear? Linear, yeah. Okay. Um, really? I did, I did not peg you as a well, guy everyone that, knows that. that's all that. Come on. Oh, true. Yeah, that's everyone. easy. Time everyone is fake, knows guys. Time, <laughs> time, time, time is fake. There is. There is. There is. There is. There is. <laughs> Another t-shirt. Time is fake. <laughs> it's going to be a hammer hitting the face of a clock. Time is fake. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Just for anybody who's listening, it's like, oh, here we go again. No, I'm being go. sarcastic. Another I mean, you could, you could convince me that it's fake. I, I'd be open to it, but I, I'm not going to die on that hill. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Because I was already thinking of things to attack you with. Love I'm it. sure you were. <laughs> One step at a time. And let's get to space what about and the gravity ocean? and, and everything. Let's the do all the, the other ocean. things, and then we'll do time after. <laughs> Okay. Oh boy. All right, let's move let's move on to the next one, which should uh spark some conversation in this extremely dull episode of Infinite Rabbit Hole. <laughs> As we covered in a very, and I mean very early episode of Infinite Rabbit Hole, sleep paralysis is one factor that needs to be considered when discussing the idea of people having certain encounters with these phantom black dogs. A common symptom of sleep paralysis is the witness is the witnessing of a black shadow, which sometimes takes the shape of a human or a large dog or cat. Often these shadows are only seen in the peripherals of our vision during the experience, but there is also a common description of witnessing a dog or an old woman sitting on your chest while suffering from sleep paralysis as well. And during the episode, episode four, season one, we also dove into the science and some fringe ideas that could be associated with the phenomenon. First, brief summary of the science. When we sleep, we enter a phase called REM, or rapid eye movement. This is where we dream. During REM, our body shuts down and basically paralyzes itself so that we do not act out our dreams and end up injured. The only things that we can do is shallow breathing and move our eyeballs, hence the name, rapid eye movement. But sometimes our eyelids open and our brain wakes up during REM, but our body stays asleep. This is when we suffer from what is commonly referred to as sleep paralysis. We are mentally awake, we can move our eyeballs, but we cannot move our bodies at all. To many people, this is a very frightening experience, including myself. Another symptom is the feeling that your chest is compressing. This comes from your body still being in sleep mode and although your mind is telling your body to breathe normally as you are awake, this does not happen, and you get a feeling of suffocation, almost like someone is sitting on your chest. And the last symptom that is commonly reported is, of course, the shadows. This is explained as your body, I'm sorry, this is explained as your eyes, still attempting to see what your brain was dreaming about, but due to the eyes not actually perceiving anything, and your brain telling itself it is, you see black undetailed, vague shadows. Now for a woo explanation. Many believe that the period between the sleep state and the wake state is not only your most vulnerable state, but also your most awake, most awake state in the sense of being open to things that we do not normally see or realize exist. Such things are shadow people, interdimensional beings, demons, aliens, ghosts, spirits, and many other things. Some people believe that we are followed by familiars at all times, but we cannot perceive them in our normal awoken state. Those same people say that the shadows you see during a heightened sensing state such as 
such you as you are during sleep paralysis allows you to witness those that you cannot normally perceive. There are many spirits and lore tied to the events of sleep paralysis, a few examples being the old hag and the succubus and incubus. What do you guys think? Hey everybody, bear with us while we take this quick break. I thought I unmuted myself. So I actually have a an interesting story, something that happened to me a few months back. I might have told you guys this. I'm not sure, but I'll tell it again for the paranormal network peeps. Um, I was asleep one night. This is when I was living in the RV. So I'm passed out. I'm sleeping. I had this crazy nightmare. I won't get through the whole nightmare, but basically towards the end of the nightmare, uh, this giant, probably seven or eight foot tall demon being i don't know what it was scary as hell kicks a door in and it comes running sprinting towards me it gets up to me and it gets right in my face and it like leans down i remember exactly what it said to me but so i wake up right and when i woke up i was completely where i was in my rv right like everything was normal i really thought that i had woken up and in that second or two like after i opened my eyes i actually felt the tugging on the blanket down by my feet right like a tugging mm -hmm. so now i'm freaked out so i reach over grab the firearm literally racked around and sat up and the moment that i sat up i actually woke up again mm -hmm. in the same position but i couldn't move for like 30 seconds i was like frozen and i was terrified for the rest of the night all the lights on didn't go back to sleep so that was like the only time I ever had any type of i guess you'd call it sleep paralysis but whatever it was it, it definitely bridged that dream world to reality world in that first time that i woke up that i didn't really wake up mm -hmm. something bridged so it, i can say that that's real to some extent dude i don't think you told that story to us no no oh, well there you go you're welcome <laughs> you told that story to yourself maybe but not us probably and now you wake up yeah welcome <laughs> we're glad you're here <laughs> no that's wild dude that's yeah. wild absolutely scary that's I've... scary also had circumstances similar to that where dreams locked inside a dream sort of stuff is pretty much the way I've described it where um wake up and think I'm awake, you know, looking around my room and I see a big old gnarly spider crawling across the wall and then I actually wake up and then I have to rip my bedroom apart trying to find it and stuff. I'm not even scared of spiders, but it just like trips me out, right? Because I think that I'm I think that I'm um uh, awake, right? So I think that that was real or something like that. So I, I've definitely been having circumstances like that. When I usually think about sleep paralysis, though, I think of more of like a, a you know, the way that most people describe it is when they they open up their eyes and they're unable to move because their body's asleep, though they can look around and then they get the feeling like something's sitting on them and all sorts of stuff. I never really considered that sort of dream inside of a dream state or whatever to be tied in with sleep paralysis but yeah i mean if it is then i have experienced sleep paralysis he says that all Good proud yeah. <laughs> i am cool too <laughs> yeah i'm not cool because i lucid dream more than i regular dream i'm cool because i also have had sleep paralysis <laughs> <laughs> I guess that makes me uncool then because I have never experienced anything like that before. Oh, what a lame-o. Consider yourself lucky, honestly. It's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I've you know had... what? Listening to these stories, I, I kind of do consider myself lucky because I'm scared for you guys just listening to your stories. So, no thank you. I you don't like one... spiders or demons? Uh, I'm all right with spiders, and I wouldn't want to mess with a demon. So, what do you tell you, Jeff? What do you I say? Don't remember, I think in the dream, if I remember correctly, because you know how dreams are, but I, I'm yeah. pretty sure, I'm pretty sure when the door opened, kids ran out of the door, and they were saying something like, "He's got us locked in here," or like we're stuck, or something like that. And when he came out the room and got in my face, I think I asked him like, "What are you doing?" Like, like, why are the kids locked in? Or like, what are you doing with these kids? Mm -hmm. And he said something like, they're for him. They're for him. 
and then that's when I woke up and felt the tugging on my on my foot. So, hmm. but I might be I might be merging two dreams together because it has been like six months. But I'm pretty sure that might have been relatively accurate. If it wasn't the mushrooms, <laughs> it definitely wasn't the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the kangaroos. Couldn't have been the kangaroos. <laughs> that that one, not the kangaroos. Uh, it was terrifying. But then again, I do the conspiracy show, and I talk to a lot of freaking weirdos. So, <laughs> you know, somebody could have just, you know what I mean? Like, I could have been having some thoughts about something that somebody else told me, and like it caused the dream to happen. Because that happens to me a lot. Where if I have a thought about something during the day, like I'll dream about it later. Yeah. So all could've... the time. Yeah. We should do an episode oh. about dreams, our personal dreams that we can remember. I'll... All right, everyone, put a notebook by your bed, yeah. and every time you wake up, you got to jot your dream down, and we'll dream come girl? back here. Oh no, no, I don't, I don't mean like just like simple dreams, like yeah, I was stuck in the grocery store and I couldn't find the beans. I mean like <laughs> like a good dream, like the ones that you remember because they filled you with <laughs> dread, and you when you woke up, you had to t- take a deep breath because you were holding your breath the whole time, you know. Or the it's reoccurring like dreams. Yeah. Reoccurring the ones dreams you can't are walk. fun. You ever have the ones where you're trying to run or you can't walk and you're just like, yes. Right? You're like, oh, just yeah. Gone. And you just can't. See, for me, it's fighting. Yeah. I, I I get violent in my dreams and I go to fight and I can't move my, I can't like punch fully. And like, you know, I, I go and it's just like I'm throwing a wet noodle at somebody. And it's very upsetting. Mm-hmm. And while your wife's in the bed dodging. <laughs> no maybe i don't i don't know maybe <laughs> honey honey why did you sleep on the couch tonight she's like <laughs> no she beat my ass you kidding me so where does black dogs fit into this then Doggy. so there are a ton of stories of people waking up to black dogs in the room um, I didn't include any of them in this episode because I do include them in the next couple ones. Okay. I want to say we go over two or three of them. When I say that there are multiple stories of these different events in black dog lore, I'm talking about a lot. There are way too many stories and, um, accounts of black dog sightings and everything there's a reason why i chose to do the black dogs as our our introduction to the paranormal network because this is a huge subject and honestly you know if i'm going to be completely honest there's so much of it that it's hard for me not to believe that there's not something there like there has to be something going on with black shadowy canines in the world in order for so many accounts to be there and still going today you know it's it's like the the thing i said about bigfoot right you could have or we do have thousands and thousands and thousands of reports and these are just the reported ones of an upright walking creature throughout the world got bigfoot in this episode by the way and those are just the reported ones, not the unreported ones. You got to think that out of what five people that see a Bigfoot, maybe one or two of them will, will report it, maybe, right? Because people get called psychos mm-hmm. and and right. uh, they just don't want to relive that crap. You know, for a long time, I didn't come out with my story because I had a really bad couple of experiences with telling people I saw something and, you know, the next day I didn't have friends. And, um, so it's a numbers game with, with a ape, ape like creature walking around on two legs in the middle of the woods around the world. So let's say just as an even number, we have a thousand, um, accounts, right? Times that by a hundred or, or a thousand itself. I'm just using a small number, right? Half of those are misidentification. We still have 500. Half of those are uh, hoaxes. Okay, we still have 250. Half of those are, um, I don't know, uh, hallucinations. Still have a 
uh, 125. That's 125 that could possibly be a upright walking creature still. Like, it's just a numbers game. That because of so many reports of both Bigfoot and these phantom black dogs, it's very hard to believe that something isn't out there. I'm just saying. So, but, and that's why I like your, your, the way your brain works, because that's what you do, right? You, you look at it and you're just like, there has to be something there. But in my perspective, I'm looking for how can this be completely and utter horse crap, right? Because mm -hmm. unlike Bigfoot, which I think everyone on here can agree that they probably exist, right? And they we're exist. still waiting for, for science to say 100% yes. Fuck but that. there's, right. <laughs> there's uh, you know, there's research teams that go out because these massive apes leave behind footprints. They leave tree breaks and all kinds of stuff. We're talking about a spiritual being which is completely unverifiable each and every sighting, mm -hmm. right? If we're really talking about something that's spiritual and not physical, right? If it's a real, if you really find footprints of a black dog, it's probably because it was an actual real, you know, Newfoundland or black lab mm -hmm. or something like that. But if you're sitting there saying, oh, well, I saw a spirit dog or whatever it is, that would be completely unverifiable. There would be no way for anyone to tell you that what you were saying was, was a lie unless they hooked you up to a polygraph test and then it was determined that you were lying. So, and there's so many different circumstances and now various colors and all kinds of stuff. And it's just like, I mean, I mean, I could throw out on Facebook that I saw a black <laughs> dog when I was driving, you know, when I was yeah. riding my, my motorcycle home. Oh, it ran across the road and then disappeared. And there would be literally no one could tell me that what I saw wasn't what I saw because I could just say, oh yeah, it didn't show up on the security camera because it was meant for me to see it. Right. So it's just like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm like, most of this is made up and some of it is hallucinations because people have black dogs on the brain. Um, but I like I, the way that you go at it because you're looking at it of how can we prove that this is true? And I'm like, how can we show that this is completely fake? But it's interesting. That's why I like it so much when we kind of go at the same exact topic because we don't think the same. Right. And that's why we're the infinite rabbit hole. That's right. But I agree that probably 90% is, it could definitely be bullshit. I mean, a red one? Come on. A yellow <laughs> one? I mean, who knows, right? Yellow is easily confused with white, possibly mm -hmm. beige, whatever, and vice versa. So those could be one and the same. Obviously, when you see something like a white and black dog, those are completely different. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to confuse a white and a black dog. I mean, unless you are in like the dark, right? Right. Pitch black. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. There's definitely no matter what we're talking about, what topic we're talking about. I mean, it could be as certain as Bigfoot for me and as uncertain as the Jersey Devil for me, there's going to be mm -hmm. hoaxes. There's going to be uh, misidentification. There's going to be hallucinations. There's going to be incorrect reporting. There's going to be just straight psychotic people that are seeing shit, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the sliver of people that have a legitimate sighting or could have a legitimate sighting. When you have so big of a number, sure, it's almost impossible that some some of them are not fake or are not real. W whatever. Some of them are real. <laughs> That's how I'm looking at it. I know, I know, Jacob. I know. Anyways, sleep paralysis. I think it's a, a very good way. If, if you're seeing a dog in your bedroom by your bed, that's an easy way to knock off a few thousand of these reports. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. It's just like just because you imagine it and a bunch of people imagine it doesn't mm -hmm. make, make it real. Facts. Right? True. So it's just like, and you can say that about a lot of things, honestly, but, you know, you could say that about, you know, my religious beliefs if you really wanted to, you know. You just say, oh, just because a lot of people believe it doesn't mean it's true. I mean, you could say that about anything. 
but you know that's where my head goes with it it's just like well you know mm-hmm. but yeah but yeah i don't, I don't know I'm, um, I'm still digging the episode though like I, really yeah it doesn't take anything away from <clears throat> enjoying the the stories and stuff right just because like i listen to audiobooks and stuff i'm listening to the lord of the rings right now at no point do i think that the Lord of the Rings actually occurred at any point oh, that's in history. Real, that's history. Oh, that's, that's, oh, that's crazy real. real. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's history. Yeah. Come on. That's, true. History, right? that's how men about? came about. But Gravity, I mean, space, all that's fake. But right? Lord of the Rings. But ride, I'm dude. enjoying the story, right? So I can still enjoy the ride without believing for a second that any of this is real. Right. You see what I'm kind of meaning about like how the the content in this episode doesn't really take away or I mean, it just adds a little bit to the previous episode. It's decent stuff, but it it was just most of it was just stuff that you know I had to I had to trim the fat off on the first episode, and then I came across this mm-hmm. right the sleep paralysis one, and I was like, that's an, that's a really good one. The gallows one was another one that I I had, and then the one I'm gonna jump into next uh, were the three that I was like, these should really be in an episode. You know, I, I like the gallows one. I like the sleep paralysis one, and this one. And, and ready? just because people, be- a lot of people believe in gravity, doesn't make it real, right, Jeff? Exactly. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> True. How many reports? Do, how many reports are out there of gravity? Ugh, like a none. lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen that, gravity, guys. dude. Yeah. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen gravity. What a I comment. Mean, <laughs> I, am, I am not somebody that really dives into or believes in a lot of woo stuff, mm-hmm. right? I believe that in order for a cryptid or a mythological creature to have existed, it needs to make biological sense. And I'm not one for, you know, when I was originally diving into this phantom black dog thing, I thought this was going to be one, maybe two part episode. Mm-hmm. But there is so much content out there that I started having to break it down by region because there's regional differences, slight regional differences, uh, historical things, especially when we get into Latin America, Mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, Trust me. I I, I don't usually bite on, on the woo stuff, man, but the phantom black dogs have me very curious. That's all I got to say. I'll hang in there then. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk about the body of the black shuck, okay? In May of 2014, the skeleton of the famous black shuck, a very famous variation of black dog legend in eastern England, was found. During an archaeological examination at a Leaston Abbey in Suffolk, England, a skeleton was found that supposedly belonged to a seven-foot-tall, two hundred-pound dog. That is, if you believe it. The event did happen, of course, but were the actual numbers correct? The story first broke in the Daily Mail, a national tabloid in England, and at the end of the long string of different quote-unquote news outlets, the story finally showed up at the Yahoo News website. As with many other stories in the past, the numbers were drastically changed by Yahoo to the height of 7 feet tall and 200 pounds. Although the story and belief around the findings did spark an outpour of rekindled interest in the black shuck and other black dog legends from around the world, the facts are that the remains that were found were not nearly that large. Yes, they were of a large dog, and most experts believe that they belonged to a Newfoundland. There were plenty of examples of pottery found at the dig as well that dated back to the 1500s, which was well into the height of the Black Shuck's reign, and so this may be where the original link between the dog's remains and the Black Shuck may have been made. Now, this is a show composed of North Americans, and most of our listeners may not be too familiar with what exactly an abbey is. So let's go over that real quick. An abbey, according to the Dictionary of Oxford Languages, is a building or buildings used by a community of monks or nuns. And according to Mark Norman, in his book Black Dog Folklore, the managing director of the archaeology group responsible for the dig site remarked on the find is not that impressive as pets in that time were highly regarded and were often buried with their de- after their deaths. 
This could have easily have been a pet of someone in the abbey or of the communities and was simply buried on the ground. I include this story as a way to debunk the reports from many others that the body of the famous Black Shuck was found in 2014. This, unfortunately, is not true. The original article in the Daily Mail read, read, quote, Are these the bones of Devil Dog Black Shuck? Nowhere in the article did they ever state that it was in fact the remains, but instead used the title as a sort of clickbait for the article. But when Yahoo News reported on the topic, they must have only read the title and created an article from that alone because the article is honestly complete bullshit. And I cannot find their sources or anywhere where they would get sources for this information. But unfortunately, this led to many, and I mean many, different websites, podcasts, and even smaller documentaries and even magazines using the Yahoo article as a source and spreading the false information further than it ever had than it ever should have been. So, like I said in there, summarizing, right? I included this because when you listen to a podcast or you pick up a book or you read specifically podcasts and website articles, they always talk about how the body of the black shuck was found in 2014. Mm -hmm. That is incorrect. I read the original article from the Daily Mail. The remains were not nearly as big as 7 feet 200 pounds. So they didn't find Fred. Okay. They did not find Fred. Okay. Um, but when you go to the Yahoo article, there it is. Seven feet tall from the ground to the shoulders. Mm-hmm. 200 pounds. Hmm. Well, now you guys know why I don't trust the articles that say dinosaur bones are real. <laughs> well, that was obviously a dinosaur. It wasn't even a dog. Hmm. Obviously. Obviously. (laughs) Yeah, Jeremy, just because a lot of people believe in dinosaurs doesn't make them real. Right? Uh, How many sightings are there of dinosaurs? Zero. Actually, there's a lot. Macaulay and Bembe, uh, that little dinosaur that ran across the backyard in Florida, that's in your neck of the woods, dude. That wasn't even a dinosaur, dude. It was totally a dinosaur. looked like an overraptor. We've got big lizards that live here, dude. Dude, do you even know what video I'm talking about? Yeah, it looks like a dinosaur, but it's probably a dog, to be honest with you. Or <laughs> I think so. It might could be an iguana. I've seen iguanas run on their hind legs, and they look nothing like that. They're I've, not I've graceful seen... about, with it. Oh, yeah, right? Can be. This thing oh, is yeah. pure grace. Yeah. It can be. Could have been anything. I'll tell you what, though. That bad. dinosaur didn't have feathers. So... That's true. Yeah. It did not. <laughs> now you're thinking. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't seen any uh, feathered gators out there. <laughs> yes, for oh, those that are for those that are new to our here. show, Jeff took us on a wild ride about dinosaurs are fake on a audio only episode. So please check that out. It's pretty pretty good, pretty good stuff. Good job, Moral Jeff. of the story: dinosaurs are fake. Yeah, eh, I don't know, but in space and it's questionable. Gravity. He hasn't and... done space is fake yet, or gravity Happiness is, is fake. fake. Right, or Jeff? nukes is fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could do nukes is fake too. Listen, I got a lot of stuff that we could talk about that's fake, bro. Oh, all and right. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna talk about all of it. All right. I like Eventually. fake things, so right. enlighten us. I actually I think I might have a really good one for the uh space is fake. I have somebody that wouldn't mind coming on and debating with you, and I, I can't wait. I'm, gonna I'm just gonna him. sit back and let it happen. I'm gonna wreck him. <laughs> and we're finally gonna get that. wrecked. I can't <laughs> wait. It'll be a battle that's of the beards. Be... It it's gonna be, be so much fun. It will. I It'll love be. the guy, but he's gonna get wrecked. <laughs> Jeremy likes <laughs> fake things too, like black dogs, for example. Yeah, <laughs> and Bigfoot. Bigfoot's <laughs> not. You big, know, dude. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. Yeah. Well, we're gonna need a new coach. <laughs> <laughs> he got me all fired up. He's calling me out, man. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> let's go. You had one in your backyard, dude. Yeah. What are you talking about? You, Slap didn't the you side of your trailer with an someone? alligator. Okay, first of all, I didn't actually see a swamp ape in my backyard. I just assumed it was a swamp ape because we were doing an episode on swamp apes. 
and the he light got startled, went on. dude. <laughs> yeah, he got, he got freaked out here. I actually remember listening to that, and I was laughing. He's like, "Okay, so I gotta hard go." Listening I to that, there. I'm so startled. I'm so well, I did a perimeter. I went locked and loaded. <laughs> I did. I went full gear. I was ready to go. It's like, it's like Jeremy, dude. I don't. I don't want to cut you off, but. I gotta go check on this. <laughs> <laughs> the lights not turning off. <laughs> You'd have thought I was like a mercenary or Delta Force yeah. the way I went out that door too. I, I was have, ready. I would, being in your, you know, subject matter for podcasting, I would have been more worried it was the Alphabet Boys coming to get me, put a, bl- a flag Boys. over my head or whatever. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I've been worried about them for so long that I'm not worried about them anymore. <laughs> Like I just I come out in the morning and I see a car parked out front and I'm like, hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> look, let's ask the real question: Is this still the real Jeff? Who knows, man? Ooh, I wouldn't That's a even good know question. If I was cloned, Are we gonna get any clones? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Eventually, okay. Well, you know, I could be a clone. How would I know? They could they could implant memories and everything. Yeah, easy. The no real problem. Jeff is a NASA We're- right now. We're we're over we're over for all we know he's green screening us right now. He's yeah. wearing a green suit and he's not at all Jeff. He's just some guy pretending to be Jeff. Yeah, that beard is too good. <laughs> too good to be true. Could be fake. Too, could be fake. Could be. Looks like it might be glued on. Hashtag Jeff is fake. <laughs> Another new T-shirt, man. You are on a roll. It came for, full circle. Full circle. Oh. Uh. Good stuff. All right. I got, I think, one more. Yep. One more. You guys ready? Yep. Nope. Let's get her done. <laughs> Pop culture. I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel here for you guys. The black dog legend has shown up in or was influenced on many different forms of pop culture. Led Zeppelin recorded a song titled Black Dog. Good song. But it is well known that the main influence of the song was a black Labrador that used to hang out around the studio while they were recording. But in the middle of the song, the line, Eyes that burn red, dreams of you all through my head, seem to be tied to the legend of the Phantom Black Dog. Published in, published between 1901 and 1902 in Strand Magazine by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of the character and stories of Sherlock Holmes, the Hound of Baskerville, is said is set in Dartmoor of Devon, England, and tells the story of an attempted murder inspired by the legend of the phantom black dog phenomenon. The Hound of Baskerville is the third of four crime novels written by Doyle featuring Sherlock Holmes. And Harry Potter fans will know of a black dog character named Padfoot, which takes the name from a phantom black dog legend in Wakefield, Leeds, Pudsey, and Bradford, England. The legend of Padfoot gets its name from the reports of people not being able to see the dog, but can hear its steps as if it were right next to them. That's it. That's the whole episode. And so, Leeds, you said it again. I did. Led there Zeppelin's black dog uh, probably was about the folklore because, I mean, they're from London, so why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Yeah. And they were into some spooky stuff. Uh, Jimmy Page into some spooky stuff pretty sure i lived in alice crowley's house or something at one point i'm sure i'm gonna look that up you should anyways so that's it like i said it wasn't going to be a very long episode it was really just those three points about the uh the black shuck body sleep paralysis and the gallows that i really wanted to get into an episode um so i just threw all the 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 trimmed fat from the first part into this one and said, screw it. Let's give everybody everything I had. And now I, the only stuff I have is regional specific, uh, to give you guys a little teaser of what is coming up. We're going to try not to pile them all onto you back to back to back to back, but we are recording some of these episodes very soon. Uh, so they might come out, you know, fairly quickly, still yet to be determined. Um, we might finagle the, the schedule a little bit if we can record other topics. Um, but the situation that we're in right now is that we had some stuff recorded audio only before everything with the paranormal network kind of came together. So this is what we're doing 
We don't normally dive into seven part series on one topic, <laughs> except for Injured Cold, which was four, possibly going to five here soon. But that fifth one is going to be really cool. Um, we will get into other subjects. I promise you. We just have to learn to walk in this this new uh, this new world that we're in. And I appreciate everyone's um, patience and time really means a lot to us that's it guys that's uh the basics of the black dog good job and for the record jimmy page did live in alistair crowley's house which is on uh the lake with the loch ness monster loch ness that would be <laughs> loch ness yes <laughs> yes 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 go. there you go all right so he probably did see some black dog even though the song was written before he bought the house but a uh, funny thing, lock means lake. I knew that. I was testing you, making oh, sure that you... okay, good. Right, yeah, yeah. Monster is still monster. Hmm. Ness is a Nintendo character. You are correct. Nintendo Entertainment System. Hmm. I was going to say, it's, it's an entertainment system. Yes. Not a character. No. It's also it's, a character. Is character it a character? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, don't take worry. that. I got gotcha. you. Oh, there you go. Pop culture I and whatnot. Don't play video <laughs> games, so there you go. Well, Shame. this was like 15 years ago, so I don't play yeah. the game either anymore. At least, um, I didn't. I didn't play games as uh, I. I played outside. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Kids are I was great. one of those kids. Right, I played outside. Okay. <laughs> Minus 40 weather, and yes, I was bundled up outside. <laughs> So you guys interested in this topic like at all? I am. Yeah. Don't lie to me. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah no. It's it, I'll say it's more interesting than the one that Jake did with the parachute pants walking down the street. Oh, <laughs> yes. That one was awful. He wanted to do that so bad. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> So yeah, bad. I, I like it better than the Valiant Thor. Well, that one thing. didn't even become an episode. Anyways, yeah, I know, but that's why. So, the next parts, though, let's see. We have three guests lined up. Nice for for different portions of the world. So we have, um, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it out there: England, Latin America. Then we have a specific black dog. Uh, one particular legend. I'm not going to say what it is yet. And then we have uh, the Americas and Europe. Europe is the only one I don't have uh, a guest for yet. All the rest of them I have guests for. So if you're from Europe outside of England and you want to talk about black dog lore, hit us up. Let us know because mm. we need a guest for that. And if you have something to bring to the table, that would be even better. So it won't be just the yeah. four of us sitting here all monotoned. <laughs> um, we'll actually have a guest and we'll be excited. Maybe. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> well, I'm excited for the next episodes, and let me tell you why. So despite what I said about how fake it is, um, that's with very little background information in the black dog phenomenon. And when I said that, and I, I said, you know, just because a lot of people believe it, doesn't make it true and you could say that about religion too you know people could say that about my my beliefs but that's when we have to go into the evidence of it the history of it you know does it make sense is it logical all those different things so i believe in my faith because of the history and the evidence and the logic and all these different things and you know if you can provide enough information about black dogs to where it actually makes sense versus just like you know anybody could just say oh black dog and blah, blah blah all this sort of stuff you know or at least that there's a a basis in history about it where people could you know pull this sort of i don't know pull this idea out of you know that it just wasn't just made up on at some point or something like that. I, I don't know exactly how to describe what I'm what I'm thinking, but I'm excited to see 
you know, how far back this goes and which cultures was it more popular, you know, in the same way it was like the bridge, right? Having the, the bodies of the dogs inside the bridge. That's interesting. You know, I don't think that that's anything more than um, a really messed up thing to do to canines for some uh, superstitious type beliefs. Um, but it is still interesting because it's still history, right? So I'm interested in that portion of it and to uh, to see where this makes sense at some point. You know, what what were people believing at the time that led into this belief that um, canine spirits follow people around or something like that, right? Like, where does this all tie in together? So I'm I'm stoked, especially if it's like Black Dog Legends in North America and then in uh, England and then in South America and stuff like that. The exact same thing with mermaids. Either the story started somewhere and then it spread out all over the place, or, you know, which is probably likely, or that, I don't know, there's some reality behind it. You know, there's some sort of circumstance that happened with where in multiple different spots where there, there's some level of truth to it and stuff where the lore just kind of sprang up out of, you know, I'm, I'm excited for all that. Right on. Anybody else? And also, gravity's fake. Gravity's fake. Debatable. <laughs> Debatable. <laughs> we'll get into that. Don't worry. Um, I'm with Jake. I'm I'm really excited to hear about the region specific stuff. Mm-hmm. Always, yeah. it always seems to get more in depth and more, way more interesting when you're talking about one specific area. So I that I think will be fun. Jeffrey, I'm ready to talk to some guests. Yes, yeah, that too. Yes, I miss it. That, that's coming up quick. Coming up quick. All right. Um. All right. Well, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and close out, guys. You good. Good. All right. Good. Well, golden. thank you. For, what? Golden. Golden. Ah, we're golden pony yes. boy. Well, that has been another <laughs> episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. <laughs> On behalf of us all here at the Infinite Rabbit Hole and our friends and family over at the Paranormal Network, I would like to say thank you for joining us once again in this path of the Infinite Rabbit Hole. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye. 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 Bye.